Hello everyone. What does this beer, mead, and cheese have in common with each other? We'll get to that right after the intro. Hello, Brian from Sui Generis Brewing here. Welcome once again to the small farm that I live on. And I have a bit of a fun video today. This isn't any sort of brewing microbiology or anything like that. It's just sort of a little experiment that I did uh, to sort of explore some options of products we make on the farm. This all started about two years ago when we invested in some quality goats that my wife breeds as part of a business. And last year was our first year with kids. Now, one of the sort of side products of having goats, uh, especially goats if you're breeding them, is milk. And not a small amount of milk. Uh, one of our goats will produce about four liters of milk a day. For my American viewers, that's a little over a gallon a day. And we had two goats in milk. So we had quite a bit of milk to deal with. So I naturally uh, found a way to ferment it and started making cheese. Now, one thing I've always been interested in when it comes to cheese are cheeses that incorporate beer. Uh, I'm sure many of you have had things like stout cheddar or maybe beer and cheese soup, which are great ways to combine those flavors together. But one thing I was always disappointed in with some of those stout cheeses is they didn't have much of that beer flavor and oftentimes the coloration in them uh, from the stout itself was rather weak. In fact, uh, some of the ones you buy that are quite darkly colored are stained, they're dyed. It's not actually from the beer itself. So I decided I would take my home brewing hobby and brew a stout specifically with the intention of using it in a cheese. Uh, but what I did is I brewed an export style stout with extra roasted malts in the hopes that that roast character would come through in the beer. I did that knowing that the beer would likely be a little unbalanced and so in order to uh, account for that I um, added a little bit more crystal malt and other things to bring up that sweetness and I also dropped the bitterness down a little bit. Turns out I was half right on that, that. I'll get back to that in a second. Uh, but it ended up actually being a really good beer. I then proceeded to make what is sort of our house cheddar. Now this isn't a cheese making video. If you want to learn how to make cheese, I'm going to recommend Gavin Weber's video. I'll put a card up here for it. Uh, Gavin Weber is a master cheesemaker from Australia. Uh, everything I know about cheese making I learned from him, uh, including the cheddar recipe that I based this on is, is based on one of his recipes. So once the beer was ready, I, uh, I started to make the cheese. Now I was making this cheese in the early winter and unfortunately the quality of milk changes throughout the season and we were starting to have some trouble with the milk setting and actually forming a proper curd. And so you might notice this cheese here, it's not the biggest cheese. Uh, it's actually about a third smaller than it should have been based on the four liters or one gallon of milk that I used to make it. Uh, and that's uh, just because of, of the issues of the later season milk and also us not really being too sure how to account for that difference. Uh, we, we've since solved that problem, uh, but uh, at this time we hadn't solved it yet. Uh, after making our standard cheddar cheese, I cut the curds into small cubes, which I then soaked for an hour in the uh, stout, uh, covering the cheese completely and turning the cubes a few times to try and make sure they coated evenly. I then pressed the cheese, back packed it and aged it. It's now about seven, seven and a half months old. But the story doesn't quite end there because I now got home brewed beer worked into a cheese but I also have this little bottle of mead sitting here and you might be wondering what's going on with this. Well, about the time that I made this cheese, I also was starting to experiment with a type of mead called Blonde or Bland. Uh, it's Bland, but with two A's. Uh, and this is a, a mead that's made using the whey from cheese making as the liquid. So rather than mixing water and honey, you mix whey and honey. And so I thought, well, I've made a few of these. I've enjoyed them. They, they taste a bit like Chardonnay wine. So why don't I try making one from the cheese using the same yeast that I used for the beer, which is the Irish ale uh, strain. Now normally with bland you would use a Chardonnay yeast because that's going to give you the appropriate flavor. So I'm, I'm quite curious to see. I actually haven't tried this mead yet. Um, so I'm quite curious to see what it tastes like. Now you'll notice I, I do have some yeast residue in the bottom and I have some uh, what I think is milk protein that's separated out. So I'm still working on, on getting good at making blonde, although this is actually the worst one so far. Uh, most of them have been clearer than this. Uh, but 
that's how that was made as well. And again, the recipe for that will be included in the blog post, uh, link in the video description. So of course the place to start is going to be here with this cheese. Curious to see if the, the bit of veining we have on the surface makes its way through the middle. It's got a nice texture, I can already tell just by cutting. And if you look there, oh, we have some pretty nice veining. We also have some what are called mechanical holes. And one thing with beer soaked cheese is that uh, sometimes the curd doesn't want to stick together very well. And, and when that happens, you get these little mechanical holes, but that's okay. Actually, the other side's uh, a little worse in terms of those mechanical holes uh, than the, the front side. Now, of course, cheese is meant to be eaten. So let's get us a slice here. So the first thing that's a little unusual about this is it, it smells neither like cheddar uh, nor like beer. I'd say the closest thing I, I can think of that smells like this is actually a fondue uh, style cheese, a cheese, uh, a cheese fondue. Uh, it has almost that Swiss cheese aroma to it uh, and it does have almost what I would describe as an alcohol note, although obviously there'd be no alcohol left in this. Well, let's see what it tastes like. <laughs> Mm. So the taste is really good. Now, if I didn't know I'd put beer in there, I wouldn't guess that that was a beer cheddar. The um, flavor uh, coming from the beer, I would say is closer to if I had incorporated maybe some coffee into it, something like that. So you really get that, that roasted character. Uh, but what you don't get is sort of the malty beer flavor. So on that note, let's go to the beer. Now, the biggest mistake I made with this beer is I drank it too quickly. Uh, it was a little out of balance when I first uh, started drinking it. Uh, the roast was a little stronger than it you know, should have been. But of course, near the end of the keg, everything came nicely into balance and it was just a luscious, thick beer. Uh, really nice sort of stout for winter. So of course, in the middle of July, I'm having my last little bit of it. I did put a bit away in a bottle. Uh, so let's see what this turned out like. So, I mean, of course it, it smells wonderful. It smells like a stout, got a bit of an alcohol note to it. And uh, there's a lot of roast, but there's also sort of a figgy raisin character, which is probably from that extra crystal. Oh, and that is aged nicely. It, it almost tastes like a barrel aged beer, which is crazy because it went from a keg to a bottle, no oak or anything, but it's it's got that sort of woody astringency to it, which I think is, is just from all of the astringency from the uh, roasted malts sort of breaking down and changing and aging. Oh, that is really good. I'll be drinking that uh, even though it's hotter than stink out right now. Um, but that would be a great fireside warmer. So let's go now to the blonde. Now this is the one which I have the lowest hopes for. One is it obviously has some uh, milk protein or something in there. There's a bit of other stuff sitting on the bottom. I don't think it's yeast again. I think it's it's something from the milk. And it uses an ale yeast instead of a wine yeast. So it may not have quite the same flavor and character as we would hope for uh, from this style of a beverage. But let's try it anyways. Yeah, so you can see already we're getting a lot of that material coming over. So this is going to be a hazy drink very hazy. Um, now what's kind of uh, surprising about this is even though that yeast is the beer yeast, the, the yeast from the stout, it actually still smells a bit like Chardonnay. It's got, you know, sort of a, a fruity, almost apple note. No, uh, no cheese like aroma at all, which actually is pretty common uh, for um, blondes. Well, let's try it out. Ooh. So despite appearances, that is actually a really fantastic uh, mead. Um, it's actually very Chardonnay-like, even though it didn't use a Chardonnay yeast. Uh, sort of a light, semi-sweet summer wine. Um, the cloudiness is obviously a little unappealing, but, uh, the, the, and the aroma is not quite right. 
does have actually, I guess you would say sort of an ale note to it, but, but it sure tastes good. Um, I think what I'm gonna probably have to do is maybe decant all of these into a container and give it a little longer to settle and clear out and then maybe rebottle it after. Um, but really good. So that's it for uh, for this video. It was a fairly quick one. I just thought I'd share this little bit of an experiment with you. It's kind of a fun thing to do and to try. Uh, again, if you want to try any of these recipes, there will be a companion blog post linked to in the video description where I'll have the recipe for the beer, for the cheese, and for the wine. And with that, I'm Brian, and uh, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you next time.